everyone, my name is Rachel, the R and the RK Stumbling Bear. Welcome back to my channel. I am a reader and a writer. And today I am doing a book review for Piranazi by Susanna Clark, which was published in September 2020. So when this book came out, I did hear in BookTube the hype about it, and a lot of people who really like Greek themes and labyrinths were, was really touting this book. Where I am as a reader now, they don't appeal to me very much anymore. And so this wasn't a book that I was interested in picking up. Then the Nebula nominations came out and it was on there and I go, well, why not? I don't mind trying new things. I'm curious to see why so many people like this book that they would nominate it. So you're here to hear what I thought of it. I, I already kind of told you why I did not originally pick it up or was not interested in picking it up. So I had watched videos that had talked about this already. I'm not someone who cares about spoilers. If it's a book I'm on the fence about, or even sometimes if it's a book that I am wanting to read, I still will watch other people's videos about it. I don't, I don't mind being spoiled. And I don't think that this is a book you can talk about without spoilers. So this will have spoilers in it. Just because the nature of this book you would have to be very, very vague to talk about it otherwise. And I think if it's been nominated for two awards, there are a lot of people who have read it already. So to start off with this book, you are following a man who is called Pierre Nazi, but does not think that's his actual name. That is what the other, who is another man, calls him. And he figures he just needs something to call him, which is why he chose Pierre Nazi. And I'm not 100% certain, but I'm wondering if the other got the name Piranazzi from Giovanni Battista Piranazzi, who was an Italian, he was an archaeologist, an architect, and an artist. And like I said, I'm not sure if that was the inspiration behind that name um, or not, but I know this book made me want to go like, well, who is Piranazzi? How is that? important to what is going on. And that was the only thing I could find. So that's just a side note anyway. Um, so it, it starts off and the man who is called Piranazzi, but is not really Piranazzi, is in a house that has many halls. And they have the lower halls, middle halls, and upper halls. And the lower halls, um, sometimes the sea comes and he talks about the tides. That's where he goes to fish and to get food. In the upper halls, sometimes there's clouds and storms, and it's like the sky. And in the middle halls, that is where he lives primarily. He'll go up into the upper halls to traverse or to explore. He'll go down into the lower halls to fish, to get food, um, also explore but he primarily stays in the middle halls. And so this man is a self-proclaimed scientific thinker. He has many journals where he writes his observations and his thought process as he goes through. And the other, who is the other man who is there, the other, the only other human or on, the only other inhabitant of the house that our main character knows of, is also a scientific thinker, and they meet a couple times a week and do experiments with one another. And it's pretty clear, you know, at the beginning of the story that the main character has amnesia, is not remembering everything. And yes, you find out through the book, it's a particular trait of this house. After you've been there for a while, it takes your memories of other worlds away, but this our main character has perfect recall or an eidetic memory of everything that it happens and is related to the house so he remembers what where all the statues are i guess, sorry i forgot to say all the halls have different statues he talks he talks about it in length of these statues it's like but he has perfect recall um especially of the tides he knows when the tides are going to come when uh, great flood events, as he calls them, are going to happen. So he knows how to be safe. 
there were good and bad things for this book for me. I love the writing. I think it was beautiful. It was descriptive. And it was really the writing of this book that kept drawing me back. And as I was reading, would keep pulling me forward. I didn't care so much for the main character. He was very naive, bland, and he doesn't change. And I mean, to be clear, he does not change from the beginning of the book to the end. He gains knowledge of how he got to be there and why he was talking to people in the first place. But he actually does not change as a character. And, you know, that that is a very unique character style. Um, it's not one of my favorites, but I see where it worked in this book. And it and this type of story, it does make him more intriguing. I am more interested in the fact that he didn't change and still has a connection to the house after he does leave, what will happen in his future. I mean, this book makes me think of that, but I don't think about the actual events of the book itself. And the other, I, I found annoying. I did not understand how the main character put up with him, except for maybe loneliness. I could completely understand why he'd be intrigued to find out of 16, what he calls the, another person, or that the next person in the house would be number 16, because he has cataloged the dead bodies and bones that he has found. So the future 16th person that he talks about, which eventually comes to pass, he is very intrigued about. And I can understand why if you don't have anyone else to talk about. Something they alluded to in the book but never cleared up is they talked about how our main character didn't go crazy, whereas other people who got left in the house or were there for long periods of time did kind of slowly go crazy. Or they... Yeah, no, it was it was alluded to that they slowly went crazy. Uh, there is one character that they mentioned that had been in the house and then at the end of the book you find out he loves the house as much as our main character and wants to stay there but the main character is like no because you never learned to take care of yourself and I can't stay here right now to take care of you but if I ever decide to come back permanently I will bring you back with me and so maybe it was because the other kept visiting that he didn't go crazy. I don't know. Like I said, that is something that was never addressed. Why was able he why was he able to remain lucid through everything and not this other character who when like they recount the history of him and he was kind of going through like a mental break, it is what they say. Well, I mean, they think that the main character has gone through a mental break when he goes home and is with his family. Ah. So many things. Like I said, everything's integral. Something that also annoyed me about this is he talks about having like so many journals and then he doesn't read them. He just writes in them. I'm a journal writer. I periodically will go back and read my journals just because you change as you grow up in like different life circumstances. And he always is like, well, I don't understand. This journal says 2011. This one says 2012. And then all the other ones I have named according to how the years are. So the year of the albatross is the year that the story is taking place. Or the year the albatross came to the hall. And the whole fact that he goes, well, why was it? Like, it never occurs to him to go, well, why was I using a number system? What does that number system mean? And to go look. And then part of his figuring out what's going on is because he went and looked at his index book and realized he had entries for things already that he did not remember writing about because they were pre-house. And, oh wait, he has the journals with him. So he goes and he reads it and then all of a sudden he starts like, it does, he, hmm. that's the interesting thing. He never actually regains those lost memories. It's just the knowledge is like restored. Like, oh, the other really is not my friend. He is my enemy. Coming away from this book, I am still not 
the intended audience for it. It is not really my favorite type of book. Like I said, there are things I love about it, uh, the writing, the atmosphere. I enjoyed all of that. The plot, for me, there was it's like there's only one way that this story can happen. It, it was all set up at the very beginning, and I knew how it would have to progress. Just from reading these sort of stories as a, as a kid, as a teenager. That being said, I did enjoy the book. And I actually gave it four stars. Again, even though I'm not a fan of the characters, I like that the main character, upon leaving the house, didn't have a sudden flood of memories coming back. He remained who he was now. And as he learned his na- or learned his birth name was Matthew Rose Sorensen, he was like, well, that's nice. He goes, I take care of Matthew Rose, so- Rose Sorensen. He's still inside me. But I am not Matthew Rose Sorensen anymore. He's becoming someone new, and he's going to have to figure out who that is while balancing his love for the house still. So yeah, that was my thoughts on the book Pierre Nassi. If you have read this book, please let me know your thoughts and feelings about this. There's still things that like I feel turmoil about because I'm just, yeah, I would love to talk more about this book. So please leave me a comment down below if you have read it. Thank you and have a good day.